In our last video, I showed you that Excel is a great tool for keeping track of the food you eat. Well, that was just the start. Excel has several amazing features that make it the perfect app for dieting. In this video, part two of our series, we're going to use the amazing Excel tables. We will see how these tables not only look nice, but pack some powerful features. If you want to follow along with me at home, be sure to download the workbook. Just click the link in the description below. And if you want to take a look at the first video in our dieting series, that link is there too. Oh, and if you have a second, be sure to click the subscribe button. <laughs> now let's get started losing some weight. Let's open up the workbook we downloaded and go to worksheet log two. As I mentioned in the first video, this is a list of foods we might have eaten during two days. The list includes information on calories and carbohydrates for each of the food items we apparently ate. And as we discussed, we can easily find, say, the total calories for a given day by just selecting the cells and then looking down in the status bar at the bottom to see the total. Nice, but with a little help from Excel, we can do a lot better. Let's make our tables look a little better. We could manually format the different parts of the table using the controls in the font group of the home tab, but there's a much better and easier way. All we have to do is click somewhere in our table, as long as the table is well behaved. That is, no blank rows, no blank columns, and only one row of column headers at the top. Excel will be able to figure out what needs to be formatted. And then we click the Format as Table button. The Format as Table button brings up a gallery of different formats. There are light ones at the top and dark ones at the bottom. But I'm like Goldilocks, I like the medium ones in the middle. I'm a bit partial to blue, so I will choose the medium blue one. A dialog box appears and asks us to verify which cells should be formatted. All we have to do is click OK. Look at that. I'm going to click outside the table so you can see what it really looks like. Aren't those banded rows nice? And what about the column headers? Don't worry about those filter buttons in the column headers. We'll go over them a little later. Our table is now what's called an Excel table. This is a relatively new feature added in 2007, and a lot of Excel users are still aren't aware of it. That's a shame because not only do these tables look really good, but they also have some great features. One of those features is that the Excel tables are dynamic. They will automatically increase in size as we add data. If we right click one of the row numbers and choose to insert a row and then click another row to see what that new row looks like, look at that. The banded formatting automatically adjusts so that it's always light, dark, light, dark. Now, most of the times you'll be adding rows at the bottom of the table. So let's undo that new row and we'll click at the first cell below the table and enter a date. The table automatically expands to accommodate the new date. And let's fill out the rest of that row from some dummy data. I can always go for some more ice cream and then press the enter key. So as we add new data to these Excel tables, the new data will always be automatically included. One of the most amazing features is the total row. Watch this. We'll click the tab for log three, which is already set up as an Excel table. And we'll click any cell on the table and then up in the ribbon, a new tab appears, the table design tab. If we click it, we get a whole new selection of controls. And one of those is a checkbox for total row. We'll just click it. Now, as you might guess, a total row appears at the bottom of our table and it shows the total carbs. Nice, but what about the calories? We'll click the blank cell on the calories column and a list arrow appears. And then if we click that list arrow, a menu of different functions appears. And of course we select some and now we see the total calories. The total row is nice, but it makes it a bit difficult to add new rows at the bottom of the table. So let's move it to a better place. We'll select the two totals and copy them by right clicking one cell and choosing copy. Then we'll click a blank cell above the table and paste it with the shortcut Control plus V as in Victor. Let's add the label totals and then we will line it up on the right and make it bold. Now, of course, we no longer need the total row at the bottom of the table, so let's get rid of it. We'll click in the table to show that table design tab and then in the table design tab, we will clear the checkbox for the total row. Now, here is where the real magic happens. Remember those filter buttons I told you about before? Let's use them. We'll click the filter button for date, then we'll clear the checkbox for select all, and then click the checkbox for the first day. Look, 
we now have the totals for just one day. Let's go further. Let's filter the meal comp to show the totals for only one meal. We'll click the filter button for meal. And again, we'll clear the checkbox for select all and then click the checkbox for breakfast. Now we have the totals for just one meal of one day. Pretty nice, huh? So with this tool, we can quickly calculate the total nutritional data for each day and for each meal. When you're finished with these filters, it is easy to clear them. Click each filter button and choose clear filter. As nice as these Excel tables are, we can still do some minor improvement. Column headers always look better centered, so let's do that. First, we'll select all the column headers using a special shortcut for selecting rows in an Excel table. We'll click any one of the column headers and then we'll press Shift plus Spacebar on the keyboard. You can remember this because the Shift key is nice and wide, just like a row in a the table. Then in the Home tab, we'll click the Center Align button. It would also be good to center some of the data as well. Here, we'll use a special shortcut to select the whole column in an Excel table. We'll click any cell in the date column, and then we'll use the shortcut Control plus the space bar. Unlike the Shift key, the Control key is narrow like a column. And we'll click the Center Align button. That looks nice. Now let's do that for the quantity and the unit columns. First, we'll select some cells in both columns. It doesn't matter which ones. Then we'll press Control plus space bar to select the whole columns. And of course, then we click the Center Align button. With Excel tables, we can see the total calories for each day and then for each meal. But wouldn't it be nice to see the totals for all the days and meals at the same time? Of course it would. And we can do exactly that by using a super powerful tool called Pivot Tables. But that will have to wait for our next video in our series. Just click the link in the description below and don't forget about that little red subscribe button. Until next time, thanks for watching.